Reduced Fetal Movements Green Top Guideline Number 57 February 2011 Background Maternal perception of fetal movement is one of the first signs of fetal life and is regarded as a manifestation of fetal well-being. Movements are first perceived by the mother between 18 and 20 weeks of gestation and rapidly acquire a regular pattern. Fetal movements have been defined as any discrete kick, flutter, swish, or roll. A significant reduction or sudden alteration in fetal movement is a potentially important clinical sign. It has been suggested that reduced or absent fetal movements may be a warning sign of impending fetal death. The majority of women, 55%, experiencing a stillbirth perceived a reduction in fetal movements prior to diagnosis. What are considered normal fetal movements during pregnancy? Most women are aware of fetal movements by 20 weeks of gestation. Clinicians should be aware and should advise women that although fetal movements tend to plateau at 32 weeks of gestation, there is no reduction in the frequency of fetal movements in the late third trimester. Perceived fetal movements are defined as the maternal sensation of any discrete kick, flutter, swish, or roll. Such fetal activity provides an indication of the integrity of the central nervous and musculoskeletal systems. The normal fetus is active and capable of physical movement and goes through periods of both rest and sleep. From 18 to 20 weeks of gestation, most pregnant women become aware of fetal activity, although some multiparous women may perceive fetal movements as early as 16 weeks of gestation, and some primiparous women may perceive movement much later than 20 weeks of gestation. The number of a spontaneous movements tends to increase until the 32nd week of pregnancy. From this stage of gestation, the frequency of fetal movements plateau until the onset of labor. By therm, the average number of generalized movements per hour is 31, range 16 to 45, with the longest period between movements ranging from 50 to 75 minutes. Changes in the number and nature of fetal movements as the fetus matures are considered to be a reflection of the normal neurological development of the fetus. From as early as 20 weeks of gestation, Fetal movements show diurnal changes. The afternoon and evening periods are periods of peak activity. Fetal movements are usually absent during fetal sleep cycles, which occur regularly throughout the day and night and usually last for 20 to 40 minutes. These sleep cycles rarely exceed 90 minutes in the normal, healthy fetus. Are there factors which influence a woman's perception of this activity? Women should be advised of the need to be aware of fetal movements up to and including the onset of labor and should report any decrease or cessation of fetal movements to their maternity unit. Prior to 28 plus weeks of gestation, an anteriorly positioned placenta may decrease a woman's perception of fetal movements. Sedating drugs which cross the placenta such as alcohol, benzodiazepines, methadone, and other opioids can have a transient effect on fetal movements. Cigarette smoking is associated with a decrease in fetal activity. The administration of corticosteroids to enhance fetal lung maturation has been reported by some authors to decrease fetal movements and fetal heart rate variability detected by cardiotocography or CTG 
over the two days following administration. Fetuses with major malformations are generally more likely to demonstrate reduced fetal activity. A lack of vigorous motion may relate to abnormalities of the central nervous system, muscular dysfunction, or skeletal abnormalities. Fetal presentation has no effect on perception of movement. Fetal position might influence maternal perception. 80% of fetal spines lay anteriorly in women who are unable to perceive fetal movements despite being able to visualize them when an ultrasound scan was performed. How can fetal movements be assessed? Fetal movements should be assessed by subjective maternal perception of fetal movements. Should fetal movements be counted routinely in a formal manner? There is insufficient evidence to recommend formal fetal movement counting using specified alarm limits. Women should be advised to be aware of their baby's individual pattern of movements. If they are concerned about a reduction in or cessation of fetal movements after 28 plus weeks of gestation, they should contact their maternity unit. Women who are concerned about reduced fetal movements should not wait until the next day for assessment of fetal well-being. If women are unsure whether movements are reduced after 28 plus weeks of gestation, they should be advised to lie on their left side and focus on fetal movements for two hours. If they do not feel 10 or more discrete movements in two hours, they should contact their midwife or maternity unit immediately. Clinicians should be aware that instructing women to monitor fetal movements is potentially associated with increased maternal anxiety. What is the optimal management of women with reduced fetal movements? The initial goal of antenatal fetal surveillance in cases of reduced fetal movements is to exclude fetal death. Subsequent to this, the aim is to exclude fetal compromise and to identify pregnancies at risk of adverse pregnancy outcome while avoiding unnecessary interventions. What should be included in the clinical history? Upon presenting with reduced fetal movements, a relevant history should be taken to assess a woman's risk factors for stillbirth and fetal growth restriction. All clinicians should be aware of the potential association of decreased fetal movements with key risk factors such as fetal growth restriction, small for gestational age fetus or SGA, placental insufficiency, and congenital malformations. If after discussion with the clinician, it is clear that the woman does not have reduced fetal movements, there are no other risk factors for stillbirth, and there is the presence of a fetal heart rate and auscultation, she can be reassured. However, if the woman still has concerns, she should be advised to attend her maternity unit. Women noticing a sudden change in fetal activity or in whom other risk factors for stillbirth are identified should report to their maternity unit for further investigation. A history of reduced fetal movements should be taken including the duration of reduced fetal movement, whether there has been an absence of fetal movements, and whether this is the first occasion the woman has perceived a reduced fetal movement. Review of the presence of other factors associated with an increased risk of stillbirth, such as multiple consultations for reduced fetal movement, known fetal growth restriction, hypertension, diabetes, extremes of maternal age, primiparity, smoking, placental insufficiency, congenital malformation, obesity, 
racial or ethnic factors, poor past obstetric history, such as fetal growth restriction and stillbirth, genetic factors, and issues with access to care. If after discussion with the clinician, it is clear that the woman does not have reduced fetal movement, in the absence of further risk factors and the presence of a normal fetal heart rate and auscultation, there should be no need to follow up with further investigations. What should be covered in the clinical examination? When a woman presents with reduced fetal movement in the community or hospital setting, an attempt should be made to auscultate the fetal heart using a handheld Doppler device to exclude fetal death. If a woman presents with reduced fetal movements in the community setting with no facility to auscultate the fetal heart, she should be referred immediately to her maternity unit for auscultation. Clinical assessment of a woman with reduced fetal movements should include assessment of fetal size with the aim of detecting small for gestational age fetuses. The fetal heartbeat needs to be differentiated from the maternal heartbeat. This is easily done in most cases by noting the difference between the fetal heart rate and the maternal pulse rate. If the encounter with the woman has been over the telephone and there is thus no additional reassurance of auscultation of the fetal heart, the woman should be advised to report for further assessment. Methods employed to detect small for gestational age fetuses include abdominal palpation, measurement of symphysis fundal height, and ultrasound biometry. As preeclampsia is also associated with placental dysfunction, it is prudent to measure blood pressure and test urine for proteinuria in women with reduced fetal movements. What is the role of cardiotocography or CTG? After fetal viability has been confirmed and history confirms a decrease in fetal movements, arrangements should be made for the women to have cardiotocography or CTG to exclude fetal compromise if the pregnancy is over 28 plus weeks of gestation. Cardiotocography monitoring of the fetal heart rate, initially for at least 20 minutes, provides an easily accessible means of detecting a fetal compromise. The presence of a normal fetal heart rate pattern, for example, showing accelerations of fetal heart rate coinciding with fetal movements, is indicative of a healthy fetus with a properly functioning autonomic nervous system. The fetal heart rate accelerates with 92 to 97 percent of all gross body movements felt by the mother. What is the role of ultrasound scanning? Ultrasound scan assessment should be undertaken as part of the preliminary investigations of a woman presenting with reduced fetal movements after 28 plus weeks of gestation, if the perception of reduced fetal movement persists despite a normal cardiotocography, or if there are any additional risk factors for fetal growth restriction or stillbirth. If an ultrasound scan assessment is deemed necessary, it should be performed when the service is next available preferably within 24 hours. Ultrasound scan assessment should include the assessment of abdominal circumference and or estimated fetal weight to detect the small for gestational age fetus and the assessment of amniotic fluid volume. Ultrasound should include assessment of fetal morphology if this has not previously been performed and the woman has no objection to this being carried out. Is there any role for the biophysical profile or BPP? There may be a role for the selective use of biophysical profile in the management or investigation of reduced fetal movements. 
The basis of the biophysical profile is the observed association between hypoxia, low levels of oxygen, and alterations of measures of central nervous system performance such as fetal heart rate patterns, fetal movement, and fetal tone. What is the optimal surveillance method for women who have presented with reduced fetal movements in whom investigations are normal? Women should be reassured that 70% of pregnancies with a single episode of reduced fetal movements are uncomplicated. There are no data to support formal fetal movement counting or kick charts after women have perceived reduced fetal movements in those who have normal investigations. Women who have normal investigations after one presentation with reduced fetal movements should be advised to contact their maternity unit if they have another episode of reduced fetal movement. What is the optimal management of the woman who presents recurrently with reduced fetal movements? Women who present on two or more occasions with reduced fetal movements are at an increased risk of a poor perinatal outcome such as stillbirth, FGR, or preterm birth Compared with those who attend on only one occasion, therefore, when a woman recurrently perceives RFM, her case should be reviewed to exclude predisposing causes. When a woman recurrently perceives reduced fetal movement, ultrasound scan assessment should be undertaken as part of the investigations. Caregivers should be aware of the increased risk of poor perinatal outcome in women presenting with recurrent reduced fetal movements. What is the optimal management of reduced fetal movement before 24 plus weeks of gestation? If a woman presents with reduced fetal movement prior to 24 plus weeks of gestation, the presence of a fetal heartbeat should be confirmed by auscultation with a Doppler handheld device. If fetal movements have never been felt by 24 weeks of gestation, referral to a specialist fetal medicine center should be considered to look for evidence of fetal neuromuscular conditions. What is the optimal management of reduced fetal movement between 24 plus and 28 plus weeks of gestation. If a woman presents with reduced fetal movement between 24 and 28 plus weeks of gestation, the presence of a fetal heartbeat should be confirmed by auscultation with a Doppler handheld device. History must include a comprehensive stillbirth risk evaluation including a review of the presence of other risk factors associated with an increased risk of stillbirth. Clinicians should be aware that placental insufficiency may present at this gestation. There is no evidence to recommend the routine use of CTG surveillance in this group. If there is clinical suspicion of FGR, consideration should be given to the need for ultrasound assessment.